Well, if you've gone to the store lately, then you've probably seen a blue circle with the letters P and G inside. After all, millions of people have products made by this tri-state company. But how did P and G get started? And how it got started is a true Cincinnati curiosity. Cincinnati's own Procter & Gamble ranks as the world's top advertiser, and their ads must have some effect because it's calculated that 99% of all United States households now use at least one P&G product. Here are a few lesser-known facts about our well-known corporate citizen. Had it not been for two sisters, Olivia Norris and Elizabeth Ann Norris, there would be no Procter & Gamble. In 1833, Olivia married candle maker William Proctor, and sister Elizabeth married soap maker James A. Gamble. Father-in-law Alexander Norris suggested his two sons-in-law ought to form a partnership. It took four years, but the young men followed dad's advice and founded Proctor and Gamble in 1837. It is no coincidence that William Proctor, the candle maker, and James Gamble, the soap maker, ended up in Cincinnati. Candles and soap both require large quantities of fat, and Cincinnati, with its immense meatpacking industry, had leftover fat trimmings in abundance. At one time, there were 13 candle and soap manufacturers operating in Cincinnati. Around 1865, communication between the Procter & Gamble offices on 2nd Street and the P&G factory in the West End relied on an army of young messenger boys who made the three-mile round trip dozens of times a day. Eventually, the firm installed a telegraph line and hired a young man named Thomas Edison to keep the machine in order. P&G's first tech support contractor went on to invent motion pictures the phonograph, and the incandescent light bulb. For some years after its 1879 introduction, ivory soap was just one of many bar soaps sold by Procter & Gamble. P&G's big seller in the early years was P&G White Naphtha Soap, nicknamed Blind Pig Soap, because the packaging displayed a big P and a big G, joined by a minuscule and. From a distance, the label resembled the word pig with no eye. And of course, a pig with no eye must be blind. Procter & Gamble invented the soap opera, and soap operas are called soap operas because Cincinnati's big soap maker invented them. The first soap opera sponsored by P&G on radio was Ma Perkins, and the soap in question was P&G's Oxidol. Eventually, P&G created its own production division to produce soap operas for radio and television, including Guiding Light, The Edge of Night, and As the World Turns. And right now, I want to welcome back our good friend, Greg Hand. Thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. With most of Cincinnati's meat processing plants moved elsewhere, where does Procter & Gamble get its raw ingredients now? Now, this is the part of the Procter & Gamble story that a lot of people forget. They remember that Procter & Gamble got its start making candles and soap because they got a lot of leftover fat from meat production in Cincinnati. What they forget is how close Cincinnati is to the South. You know, Dixie is the land of cotton, and that meant a lot of cotton seeds. And so two of Procter & Gamble's products are based on oil that's pressed out of cotton seeds. And that's ivory soap, which was made with cottonseed oil in an attempt to imitate uh, French Castile soaps, and Crisco. Crisco, the brand name, means crystallized cottonseed oil. And so, in a sense, Procter & Gamble went vegetarian. Does Procter & Gamble still manufacture candles? It was surprising how long candles remained in the Procter & Gamble product line. It was long into the 1920s before Procter & Gamble stopped selling candles. And a lot of people think of electricity coming in with Thomas Edison and that sort of thing. But by the 1920s, people were still using candles to light their houses a lot. 
Hey, Greg, did I notice something familiar in that Edge of Night title screen? You are very observant. Yes, the Edge of Night in a nod to their sponsor for years and years used the Cincinnati skyline in their title screen. And so many, many people thought that the town of Monticello, where Edge of Night was set, was actually Cincinnati. Well, Greg, this has been so educational. Thank you so much for putting this story together. Looking forward to the next time. Take care.